Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up? What's up? Welcome in, Winning Cures Everything. This is the college football playoff ranking reaction for the top 25 after week number 11. This is, uh, what, November the 12th? That's right. Yep, November 12th, 2019. I'm Gary. I'm Chris. And let's go ahead and dump into this thing, man. Let's uh, let's talk about what the playoff committee decided to do after LSU beats Alabama, after Minnesota uh, handles Penn State at home, after Baylor has a close, close three-overtime win, all that fun stuff. Let's jump right in. We'll go 25 through 21. We're doing them in five-team increments. Now, of course, before we start, the show brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They have got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. They got fun stuff down there. We always appreciate them. We appreciate what they do for the show, and uh, and you should appreciate them as well because they got awesome stuff. Golf courses, awesome steakhouses, awesome sports books, everything else it's down there. It's too chilly to be playing golf right now. Maybe just a touch. It was in the 20s in Mississippi today. Yeah. Yeah, you, no, you're right. We weren't made for this crap. No, no, it's it, a little cold today, but it'll be in the fifties again next week. It'll be fine. It'll be all good. Late November, got a little Thanksgiving golf in you. <laughs> I'll you're probably, probably you're probably right. Oh yeah, no, there's some people that will be doing it. I just because it'll won't be fifty. Be. Oh yeah. All yeah. right, so uh, you can find us over at winningcureseverything dot com. All of our stuff, videos. Previews, podcasts, uh, picks, etc. Social media platforms, all over at winningcureseverything.com. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. If you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button on the video. Leave some comments. Tell us what you think they got right about the top 25, what they got wrong, etc. And let's go ahead and fire into it. Number 25, they put in App State. App State got a big win over South Carolina. I think we... Probably agree with that. Uh, App State on the Massey composite is number 27 currently. Uh, so I think that's that's fair. Reward this team for what they're doing. They are they're fantastic. That's a good team. Yeah, they got a one-loss team to a rivalry game. Yeah. Now, you, you're right about that. And two power five wins. I mean, if you can. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, it's South Carolina, North Carolina. Like, that's that's big for a Sun Belt team. Well, not just the Sun Belt team. That team recruits against those two schools. Yeah, no, I mean, you're that's, right. That's their backyard. No, you're North you're 100 South right. Carolina. They're fighting for kids for those programs. No, you're you're 100 percent right on that. Uh, number 24, Kansas State. They dropped from number 16. They are also number 24 at the Massey Composite. So, I think that's fair, right? You, you lose a close one at Texas. Totally fair. Number 23 is Navy. Navy, only one loss on the season, and that would be at Memphis. They got Notre Dame this week, so 23 in the committee's ranking, number 20 on the Massey Composite. Yeah, I thought Navy was a little low. I, I Maybe a little low, but they don't have any massive wins yet. No. And that they will have opportunities. Part of me thinks we should just give them the middle. Like, would anybody be upset if they were ranked over, you know, and I'm about to name a couple of teams, but they all got several losses. Well, Boise State's only got one loss. So, so them and Boise State basically virtually have the same resume. Yeah. So let's give them the bump up. We know they're going to lose another game. We assume or think they're going to lose another game, right? Yeah, right. So yeah. for a week, let's, let's give them a pretty good bump. And then if they lose to Notre Dame, then they get bounced out. And if they uh, beat Notre Dame, then they deserved it. Uh, you might be right. So you might be right. Okay. Now we'll we'll see if they beat Notre Dame. Obviously, they're oh, gonna move well. They're gonna fly. That's yeah. Right. Uh, number twenty two, Oklahoma State. They uh, they continue their climb. Uh, number twenty five is what they are in the Massey Composite right now. Oklahoma State, of course, uh, massive game with Oklahoma at the end of the season. So the longer they stay in here the better they will be for the Big 12 uh, competitors for the playoff, the contenders. And number 21, of course, Boise State. They've got one loss on the season. They did not look good last week. Uh, I was a little surprised that they moved them up in this spot, even just one spot. 
Me too. Um, because I mean it, it. It was close. They almost got got. Almost at home by Wyoming, who is a good team. Good team. But more money than Wyoming. But you still should not be. You shouldn't be in an overtime game with Wyoming at home. That's right. If you're a competitor for That's the... That's going to happen. This is why I think nobody would have been upset if you give Navy that bump and bump them up two spots. Ed, you might be right. You might be right. All right. Let's... Uh, next five? Let's do the next five. Number 20, Iowa. Iowa's got, what, three losses? Yes. Is that right? Penn State, Michigan, Wisconsin. All reasonable losses. All reasonable losses. They are number 19 at the Massey Composite. So one spot up at the Massey Composite. So the numbers like them a lot, and the committee does as well. And they didn't get blown out by any of those teams. No, no, they didn't get blown out by anybody. And they... Blow them out, by the way. This will be interesting. Because they do host Minnesota this week. That's right. And they're favored. So we'll see what happens. Number 19 is Texas. Uh, the Massey Composite... Not a huge fan of Texas. Magic Composite has it at 22. And they've got Texas at 19 right now. Texas went from unranked all the way up to 19 for beating Kansas State at home and not covering the spread. So that was a little surprising to me. Yeah, I agree. But they do need, I will say this, I still think that there are shenanigans involved here. Yeah. And they need... You know, Oklahoma and Baylor and what the, all of these teams need another top 25 win. I think that's we, why we Oklahoma State. This. We, think, we think a lot of these conferences are going to try to boost up the middle to bottom tier of their programs to get as many schools in here. So their top tier teams who haven't played anybody can actually have top 25 wins. Because yeah. nobody gets upset when you put these schools in the top 25 with three or four losses because they're so low. Nobody cares. And they're big-name yeah. programs. Now, you're right well, about that. In Texas' defense, who's their third loss to? The Oklahoma loss and the LSU loss seem to be defensible. Um, The third loss was to TCU. I knew it was an upset. At TCU. At TCU. So, so not a great loss, but not a terrible loss. So they no, don't I mean, have, it's not terrible. They don't have the bat. Now, they almost got got by a lot of people. Yeah. You know, so had they lost that game to Kansas, it wouldn't have wouldn't it look good? It's it's funny way, to me that they they, to, they almost lost to Iowa State. Those almost losses, like they they hold them against teams like Oklahoma and Clemson. Yes, but they don't for the teams that are in the back half of the that's, top twenty five. That's this has always been my frustration with how this thing goes. They look at the team and then they start saying how they're going to judge them. Yeah, and that's I wish there was just a parameter of judgment, and if everybody, if you're a little team or a big team and you meet those guidelines, then you get ranked higher or lower than everyone else. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. This is my issue. Because at some point in time, we're going to get to Baylor, and I'm going to get pissed off. I mean, we're getting close. We're close. Number 18, Memphis. Uh, Memphis Memphis is also number 18 at the Massey Composite. And then right behind them, Cincinnati. We had last week, we had the ACC or AAC all kind of jumbled up. I think these two teams fit together. And I think we got a collision course in the regular season, and I think they're going to meet up again in the uh, championship game. Yeah, and it'll be the same spot both times. It Because if Memphis wins... They won't be the same spot both times, not necessarily. If Cincinnati wins, then Memphis could go there. Uh, Memphis would need Navy or SMU. Now, Navy and SMU both play each other. Okay. But both of them only have one loss in conference. Yes. Memphis has a loss in conference. That's right. If Memphis loses to Cincinnati... Okay. Then one of those two teams, whoever it is, if they only have one loss, either SMU or Navy Would goes go to the championship them. game. I agree with that. But I don't foresee both of those teams winning out. Navy has Notre Dame, SMU, and Houston. Okay, I think at Houston. Houston could win that game. Possibly. Maybe. Well, it's not going to be a 10-point spread. No, no, no. I don't think it will be. I mean, it's going to um, be a close game. Of course, I mean, Memphis plays at Houston this weekend, and it's a 10-point spread, and... Houston could win. Oh, you're right. So, I mean, yes, we'll see. We're, we're projecting. Uh, and Memphis also has South Florida next week. Who does SMU have left? SMU has... Other than Navy. What a great question. Uh, they've got Navy, and I want to say it's somebody from the other side of the division. It, 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 hell, it may be Houston, too. No, Houston no, already, played, already them. played them. SMU football schedule. Let's see. Let's see. SMU beat East Carolina last week. Oh, Tulane. They host Tulane so, yeah, the last week of the season. Both of those teams could end up with another loss. 
Could. Could. Well, yeah. All this so, could but, happen. But yeah. so far, uh, that has not happened. All right. Let's so, keep moving on. Let's uh let's keep moving, keep moving. Cincy seventeen, yeah, we just talked about him. Number sixteen is no well, Cincy uh it's seventeen in the playoff committee's top twenty five, and they are number sixteen at the Magic Composite. Number sixteen in the playoff committee's top twenty five is Notre Dame. I think this is right. And Notre Dame is number seventeen at the Massey Composite. So the Massey Composite is really close to what some of these to, but, to but all of them. I think if you're watching these games, it's you're 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 kind of right on. The so SMU beat East Carolina by eight, fifty nine to fifty one. SMU Not dropped out of this. Yes. After being in it last week. So they fall out because of a close win, and Texas gets bumped up because of a close win. Yeah. Which one of those is a big school? Which one of those probably has an athletic director, a former coach, or somebody working on this committee? Somebody that was calling somebody. Yeah. Yeah. That that sounds about right. Sounds about right. Uh, let's see. Let's uh, let's move into the next five here. This is the one that I don't like. Number fifteen, Michigan. I and think they got this one flipped. Michigan is also number fifteen at the Magic Composite. Number fourteen, Wisconsin. That's right. Number fourteen uh, at the Massey Composite is also Wisconsin. Oh, I said I, I got that flipped. They got that right. I'm sorry. Yeah, they they got that part right. No, they're, they're good. Number Wisconsin. thirteen. They've got Baylor. I just don't what I don't know what Baylor has to do. I know what they want them to do. They want them to be Ohio State or LSU and beat people by twenty. Well, they, 50. not I, not just twenty, but just like a more convincing win than but what they're doing. Winning is hard enough as it is. They're I mean, not right. a historical dominant program. I think that they're holding on until this weekend, and I understand what you're what you're talking about. And that's a terrible way to do things. Well, I mean, they did it with Minnesota. If and they lose this weekend, then you drop them down. You're not penalized for putting them where they're supposed to go and then and then kill them down. I, I mean... You have to reward teams for going on this kind of a run. Now you're, so you're if they right. lose this week and everyone says, oh, see, we told you they weren't supposed to... That's fine, but they but still put them should up there be for rewarded now. for going 9-0. and Yeah. That's really hard to do in college football. I hey, there's only like three or four teams that have done it. I now if obviously go watch our previews, go watch our gambling picks, all that kind of stuff. We're going to talk about these games. I think Baylor gets a big win over Oklahoma State this week. I mean uh, Oklahoma this weekend. I think it's the week after because it's always that emotional. Let, that that's why I think Minnesota is in trouble this week. You're probably right. You're um, probably right. but we'll see because everything was building for this spot, right? It, it they. They've been looking at Oklahoma for weeks now. And I know that you're not supposed to do that. But some of these kids, like, I understand Matt Rule's mindset and the way that he teaches and coaches and whatnot. But I also know that these are kids that have always been told, like, you are not as good as these guys. Right. It You ain't never had that with TCU and with West Virginia and whatever. Oh, that's right. You're, you're equal to those teams. Exactly. You're not better than them. You're equal to them. And yes. they beat them all. They beat everybody that they were a coin flip with. And I think that that's why they have not been dominating these games. They have just skated by, found a way to win. Because at the end of the day, they may be 13 right now, but you get a big win over Oklahoma at home. That's also their style of football, too. Yes, it like, is. Like, I would not blow people out, and they don't get blown out. Because it's their style of football. Yeah, that's so just how they do you're penalizing that style of football. You're just saying, if you play this style and you win all your games, we don't care. We want you to look like Ohio State. Yeah. Well, they can't. Everybody can't do that. Baylor is number thirteen in the committee ranking. They are number twelve uh, as far as the Massey composite. I understand Massey. I understand so, analytics. No, no, no. Analytics I, aren't ever going to like these style of teams. Well, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to explain analytics to you. All I'm what? saying is where where they were not totally equal last but week. But I'm telling you, a group of people sitting down in a room. A computer can come up with whatever a computer needs to come up with based on the number that goes, gets put in there. I understand Massey B body. Yeah. I understand a lot of these analytic ranking things and, and, and Vegas's power numbers. I get all those things. When a group of people sit down to have a conversation about this stuff, at some point in time, somebody in that room has to say, 9-0, and not playing cupcakes, has to matter. And if you say, well, look at their non-con, yes. But you can't just look at one section of somebody's schedule. Because if you take out their three worst teams 
and then take out Ohio State's three worst teams and then take out Clemson's three worst teams and uh, Minnesota's three worst teams, Baylor still played the best schedule. Yeah, maybe not better than Ohio State. but I, yes, I, it I is do. better than Ohio State's. Ohio State's played Wisconsin, Wisconsin. and Wisconsin. Uh, Cincinnati. Okay, and Cincinnati. Like but Indiana. remember we take injuries into effect? Cincinnati's quarterback went out in the first quarter of that football game. Now, yes, they were blowing them out at that point. It doesn't matter. They, yeah, okay. they played against a backup. Didn't you bring that up against some when you were criticizing somebody last week? Well, they haven't played against a starting quarterback all in Minnesota. Yeah. yeah. So that has to that has to be a knock on them too. I just want to judge everybody the same. And I'm not saying Baylor should be ranked higher than Clemson and Ohio State. Not, not. I just think their body of work deserves credit. And if they lose this week, it doesn't mean they didn't deserve the accolades in week nine or week 10 okay. or week 11, whatever the hell we are. They're 9-0. and oh. They deserve to be ranked higher than that. I think, okay, I'm with you. All right, Baylor 13. Number 12 is Auburn. Auburn is number nine at the Massey Composite. I found that really strange. I like yeah. I like Auburn. You know that. And I've kind of been carrying the, the water for them all year. I like Auburn. I find it very strange that the Massey Peabody would like them. Because their I, offense I agree. doesn't put up big numbers. Well, but the, the analytics aren't so much about numbers. It's also about stopping the other team. It's, a, you know, a lot of that. Okay. Um, I think it's – I think there's no, no reason why all the big offenses – because I think it gauges offense far more heavily. Than so it these are computer offense. rankings that also have to do with success rate and whatever else. And it doesn't matter necessarily how much you win by or anything like that. Like a success rate is a percentage yeah. based on first, second, third down and how much distance you got and all that kind of stuff. Like that's that's just one part of it. It's also third down percentage. It's also red zone percentage. It's also, you know, points inside the 40. It's, you know, all this kind of mess. I got you. So... Auburn is really good at what they do. Yes. And some of these, uh, like Baylor, has not been as good at what they do as Auburn is. Now, Baylor doesn't have any losses, but that's partly because Baylor hadn't played LSU in Florida on the road. I completely agree. So, I, but I, I understand. I agree with that. But I, I am. But at some point in time, it, we, we do have to. But you're right as far as nine and oh. it's odd that they've got Auburn at nine. Like it just seems it just seems a little high. Yeah, I I th- I like Auburn, uh, but, but not but Auburn, Auburn is twelve on on, on the college football playoff ranking. Uh, number eleven is Florida, and they moved back one spot, same as Auburn, same as Baylor, same as you know whatever. So Oklahoma gets a barely barely barely. Well, we're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. Hold on. Florida is number number thirteen at the Massey Composite. So Florida drops back, and that's because their offense, their success rate, and whatnot. Not as good, right? And so, let's move into the top 10 here. And number 10, of course, you just brought them up. Oklahoma. Oklahoma is number 11 at the Massey Composite. They are skating by here recently. That, I'll you tell you this. people for barely winning. They have, they're not getting punished. Well, they did move down a spot. But it was it was because Minnesota moved up. They only yeah they only moved down because Minnesota beat the number four team in the country from last week. Yeah, you got to put them in the top ten. Number nine is Penn State. Now, this is a pretty significant drop. Yep. So this is a combination of, and eh, we didn't think Minnesota was that good, so we're going to drop you five spots, even though you went on the road against a really good team. And Minnesota is also number eight. So at, at the Massey Composite, even after losing, even after that game, Penn State is still number four. That's insane. To me. All of the advanced analytics I've that are put into these things. All of those games, a lot of those games. I watched almost every snap of the Michigan game, the game they should have lost, by the way, and uh, the Iowa game. And I just, I don't see it, man. I don't see it. They cannot put a consistent drive together from start to finish to win a ball game. Yeah, that's that's what I'm confused about. They live about. and die by the big play. Now, they hit a lot of big plays against bad teams, 
But you can't hit those big plays, even against good teams, not even great teams, just good teams. You just can't consistently do it. Yeah. And when you play a good team, they take the ball away from you because you're you're living and dying by big plays. Yeah, I agree. At some point in time, you have to be able to put a drive together. So Penn State, number nine in the playoff committee's top 25, number four in the Massey Composite. Number eight is Minnesota, and they are number eight at both. Yeah. And – I think that's fitting. If Minnesota, Minnesota right now has that one win when they did not look very good in the first four games, looked dominant against weak competition in the next four, and then got a really big road win or a so, home win. So let's so, say everybody eight and up win this weekend. Where do you move Minnesota or does everybody stay flat? If Minnesota goes on the road and beats Iowa. And Utah is at home and beats UCLA. Minnesota bumps. And Oregon Alabama. beats Arizona and Alabama beats uh, Mississippi State on the road. I, I think you probably move Minnesota up to six. At least six. Yeah. At least six. It's going to be hard to get them above Alabama. Yeah. I, I think that. I, I think they would uh, have to. They'd beat, have to go 12-0. I, I think they'd have to beat Ohio. I think if they're twelve and zero, getting ready for that that championship game, I think they're still behind Bama. Ah, man, I don't know about that. Well, I guess I, it, it, that, I guess that all depends six. because Alabama would it would have to beat Auburn but on the road. Would have one one good win on their whole season, and it would be Auburn. And Iowa would have three at that point. Minnesota would have three. Yeah. Oh yeah, Minnesota would have you know the win over Iowa, win over Penn State, win over Wisconsin. Wisconsin. If they if they if they both win out, I still think they're six. Yeah, I think they, you. I think they have to beat Ohio State. If they beat Ohio State, they move into the top four. Well, Easy. Yeah, they have I mean, to. that's guaranteed. They, they have to, though. Yeah. You can't leave them out. Here's the thing. I think if they beat Ohio State, I think they only move to four. I think the team that they beat stays in at three. You probably you, that might happen. I think the team that got beat would be three, and they would move to four. I it, man, maybe not. I Maybe not. I I on. think that they could move Minnesota to three. Ain't no way on earth. And then put Ohio State at four, and that way you avoid a rematch. You're not. You're not. You're not getting a rematch anyway. Minnesota's not beating LSU or Clemson or Ohio State. That's it. Yeah. It's, <laughs> like, what are we talking about? I mean, we're we're assuming they beat Ohio State once. So that's man, a massive I just, assumption. By that's a massive what assumption. Line, what do you think that line's gonna be? Let's just play that game for six seconds. I'd say 18 and a half, and I would take Ohio State. 23, and I'd take Ohio State. You think so? Oh, yeah. But how how high would the line have to be? So now, it took me two hours to come up with my line today. Before I don't take it or before I take Minnesota? Before you take Minnesota. 30s. I was going to say, it, if it got up to like 28 and a half. That's, a, that's an undefeated team. I, want, I just want us to reward these teams during the season while it's happening. And if they get knocked down, does it hurt anybody? Like really, if Ohio, if if Baylor was ranked seventh right now, and 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 you know Minnesota was ranked sixth, well, I tell you this: who would it hurt if they both lose and they're not there anymore? But at least they had the opportunity to be there, and they earned it. In 2015, Memphis had a massive win over Ole Miss, yeah. and then they had some other really big wins in conference. They is that started out. Ole Miss beat Alabama. That was that was the year they beat them in Tuscaloosa. That is correct. I know, I knew, uh, that's also year that. Alabama won the national championship. So. There you go. So, I still knew that but answer. but what I what I'm saying is Memphis got some big wins to begin the season, and they started out eight zero, and they were ranked number eight in the initial college football playoff ranking. Why why is that wrong? I don't say, think it is. I think that's something. The rest of their games. No, the reason is I'm bringing it up. That they were ranked there. That the reason I'm bringing it up because they they did lose three of their next four. They went I nine and three. I do, I do remember that. And but they started out at eight, and they still hang their hat. On that, that. It, that is something it, they celebrate at that football in the inst- program. It matters to these schools that have never been here before. It yeah. absolutely matters. So, what is the punishment for it? Why do it? Why? Why keep them out? Uh, you I got think, a great question. I think it's because they don't have a voice in that room. Whatever the twenty-two people are in there, they're they're not they're not made. I think it's up only thirteen in there. Whatever. That, that's even a bigger chance that they're not made up of these. Middle tier school. These aren't bottom feeders in Power Five conferences. These are these are good middle tier schools in those Power Five conferences. Let's see. The playoff committee is 
Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da. Let's see. I just don't know what the I don't know who it hurts to have them ranked. Just say if you're undefeated and you've played some decent teams, you got a couple of good wins. They're gonna put you up here. It is who cares. Frank you know, Beamer eventually, and, and you'll fall. Yeah, Frank Beamer, who represents Virginia Tech. R.C. Slocum represents Texas A&M. Rob Mullins represents Oregon. Uh, Joe Castiglione from Oklahoma. Ray Odierno or Odierno from NC State. Scott Strickland from Florida. Gary Barta, Iowa. Todd Stansberry, Georgia Tech. Um, da, 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 so Georgia Terry, Tech and NC State are the only two like middle tier programs. Well, Terry Mohair from Arkansas State. Oh, that's that's a and then CS school. Pay out? Oh, I guess not anymore. No, they're yeah. they're in the Sun Belt. Okay. So, which I think helped with App State, right? Okay. So, uh, and then Arizona State with Paola no. Boivin. So you got three mid tier Power Five. People represented out of thirteen. Yeah, yeah, they get they get shut out of the room because hey, the big boys are talking. No. It's kind of what it Oklahoma seems like. Oklahoma and Florida have a voice, and you don't. That's kind of what it sounds like. It is kind of strange that you know we we've got Oklahoma and Oregon's ads in this room. Yeah, but they have to recuse themselves if their school is involved in the college world. Like we're talking right. About. Yeah. Well, they do get to leave. I, I know they get to. I know, but you've also got people that you've built a relationship with for two months. Just saying. Hey, I know Frank's out in the hall, but he's a pretty good guy. He took for dinner a couple times. He's just saying. Piss and blowing about it. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. I'm sure that doesn't go down. I'm positive that the people that run the NCAA are the most upstanding citizens. Well, these are not NCAA guys. These are. This is a whole different thing. Remember, this they are is NCAA a, guys. No, th this is not NCAA. They're athletic directors. At, they're people that okay. work in the NCAA, right? They well, work in conjunction right, he with. He, he can bump as much as he wants to bump. Like the the schools yeah. are all member institutions of the NCAA, but they don't work in the NCAA. Like this is a different thing. But this they're is like what they're doing. Citizens. The college football playoff is entertainment. It is a TV show. Then That's all this whole thing is. If that was is. the case, then you would have you would have Fox and ABC. And and ESPN and NBC and CBS in that room, and you wouldn't have Frank Beamer because what does Frank Beamer know? Not to disperse the good name of Frank, what does he know about entertainment? What does he know about football on TV? Very little. But I'm with you. I mean, I understand where you're coming from. We derailed completely. Yeah, we did. I don't even yeah, know we did. Where we stopped. Yeah, we Minnesota. stopped in Minnesota. So, Minnesota number eight at the Massey Composite and at number eight in the College Football Playoff ranking. Number seven, the committee ranked Utah. Because they've and, got a big win. And we'll, we'll go on and toss them together here. And Oregon. Utah and Oregon, who both have a loss. One's a bad loss. One's a good loss. Is USC a bad loss? Uh, I think so. I think South Carolina's a bad loss. Yeah, but I don't South think Carolina, USC is a bad the, loss. Okay. I, I think they're not a whole hell of a lot of different in those two losses, but the team that lost to South Carolina also beat Notre Dame and Florida. In Florida. See, that's true. See, that's the problem. If you're going to have a bad loss, you got to have a good win somewhere. That's I guess my their, only knock on Utah. Their, their good win is either at Arizona Washington. State or at Washington. It's, it's at Washington. Um, but they both got the same record. Yes. So – they They're haven't the beaten anybody team. that no. has less than four losses. That's that's hence, pretty absurd. That's why I barely have Oregon in the top ten, and I don't have Utah. Yeah, no, I'm I'm with you. Now, as far as I test, I mean, this defensive line is legit. They are absolutely legit. Uh, Utah is number ten at the Massey Composite. Oregon at number six. Oregon is also number six at the Massey Composite. Uh, let's go on and do our top five really quick, or not ours, but theirs. Sure. Alabama at number five. They are also number five at the Massey Composite. They put Georgia at four. And it's a little crazy to think about. But, and obviously rankings change from week to week. But if LSU were to beat Georgia and everything else kind of holds firm as it, as it is, then you would have Alabama get into that last spot. 
If everything happens the way it is, Every, yeah. If, if everything holds the way it is in these rankings currently, that's about the way that this. Because if Oklahoma wins out, I think they're going to have something to say about that. I think if Oregon wins out, I think they're going to have something to say about that. Yeah. If Utah wins out, they're going to put a conference champion, I believe, over a one loss non conference champ. Yep. And now all of this has to. We'll just see how it goes from there. But Georgia sitting at four is number seven at the Massey Composite. They've got Auburn this weekend. They've got Georgia Tech at, no, sorry, Auburn, Texas A&M. A&M. Then, Georgia. then Georgia Tech, and then LSU. Where's that A&M game? That's at, that's at Sanford. It's a, yeah, it's in Athens. Yeah, so that, that, they, should, they should handle it. So, but Auburn this week is on the Plains. Yep. And LSU, of course, in Atlanta is what it is. Pending LSU um, wins out. That's not going to kick us. That's a good point. We that's a good to, point. I think we do have to go through Fayetteville. Yeah. That's a that's gonna be a tough one. That's a beautiful place. Who's the interim coach for them right now? Is oh, it Chavis? I oh, I don't I don't know that I paid attention to who they named. I have no idea. Wow, I've kind of been all over some of this Arkansas stuff, and I don't know that I've even noticed who they named. Let's see, Arkansas Chavis interim is like coach. the most experienced person there, but at Arkansas they kind of like offense, so I wouldn't surprise me if they put like Will Sanders there. Uh, I couldn't tell you who the. Looney. Isn't that the guy they... Who, they who Barry Looney Jr. Is that his OC? Isn't that the guy he brought with him from SMU? I guess. Longtime Arkansas assistant takes nope. over Hogs. Then never mind. He's definitely not the guy he brought with him. Let's see. Former Arkansas quarterback, current tight ends, and special teams coordinator Barry Looney was named the interim coach for the remainder of the season. So that's just an Arkansas guy. They wanted somebody that could win. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's interesting. Okay, so Barry Looney Jr. against Edo, we'll see how that goes down. But either way, uh, wits there. number three is Clemson in the playoff committee's rankings. They are also number three at the Magic Composite. Number two is Ohio State. They are number one at the Magic Composite. Beat somebody, score seventy something points, and drop. There you go. That's pretty tough. Number one, LSU, and they are number two with the Magic Composite. Uh, yeah. I, th- I think it is pretty much set. LSU, Ohio State, and Clemson are locked. I think are pretty much locked. Yeah. LSU would have to lose to Georgia. Not I think LSU could LSU could lose to Georgia. They're not going to lose one, though. They, they would still drop from one. They're in. No, they drop from They're one. In. But I'm just saying, like, this order stands pat. Nobody's I, bumping in and out of anybody. The only way I could see it? Georgia loses. LSU loses. No. If LSU looks kind of eh against Georgia and Ohio State continues to dominate everybody by 30-plus. The only team they've got left to look good against is Michigan. They got Penn State. They got Penn State at home. Okay. They got Michigan on the road. And then they got the... They just lost to Minnesota, who, who they don't they don't respect. Well, then you might get to play Minnesota. But they don't respect Minnesota. I understand that. They'll but have like they, two good wins on the season. They've also got Penn State currently at number nine. So LSU, with that resume, if they're undefeated, it doesn't matter how... Bad. They could barely beat Georgia by one with a come from behind, never led the whole time until the last second. The only, the only other thing... One because they will have a win over Texas who would be the third probably best team that, that Ohio State had played. Um, Alabama, who would be the best team Ohio State would have played if they played them. Auburn, who would be the best team Ohio State would have played. Florida, who would be the best team Ohio State would play. That's true. And Georgia, the best team Ohio State would yeah, have you, played. You have a valid point. You have a very valid point. They could be, they could be pulling... If there are shenanigans, if Alabama gets in as the number four seed, I could see them dropping LSU to two and still putting them in Atlanta, but putting LSU against Clemson and Ohio State against Alabama as opposed to LSU-Alabama rematch. That's the only way that I could see it it. moving. That would piss me off to lose the number one seed. Not that it matters because at that point, all four of those teams are kind of even. Like, we think those four teams are the same team, right? Yeah. Pretty much. Like, Ohio State and Clemson look unbelievable, but they're not playing close to the caliber of games that LSU's played. No, agreed. So, and I, think, and I don't I think, think... It doesn't matter 
what no one gets a home field advantage. Don't I mean I guess we get to play the game in Atlanta and Alabama and Clemson would both. But if we play against Clemson, or if we played against Alabama, that game's gonna be fifty fifty. Yeah, like it it don't. And if it's Ohio State, it's gonna be fifty fifty. Ohio State's bringing folks. Yeah, like it doesn't matter if you got those four teams. It doesn't matter what your playoff is. If Georgia beats us and they get in, it it you, wouldn't matter. You've got four. Big dogs. Yeah. Now, I think there's a separation between us and Georgia. I think there is too. I, I think and Clemson I, and Bama. And I think Georgia loses to Auburn this weekend. I do too. But we'll. I mean, we'll, we'll get, get to that. that. So, all right, hey, that's going to wrap it up. Really that was a that was a little bit longer than anticipated, but that is the wrap up Sorry for the that. rankings reaction uh, after week number eleven, going into week number twelve. We appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Of course, if you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Uh, leave some comments. Tell us what the committee got right, what they got wrong, what you think we uh, got wrong in all of this. What, <laughs> we, we've all got opinions. We love to hear them. So leave some comments. Tell us what you think. And if you're listening on the podcast, if you're on Apple Podcasts especially, subscribe. Leave us a nice review. We always appreciate getting those. Those are always a lot of fun. Thank you guys for checking us out. Go to tunicatravel.com. We'll see you all again next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.